Okay, people that are taking geometry, this is a lesson on parallel lines, transversals, and angles. Now, when I have two parallel lines, and by the way, on all of my drawings today, um, if you see two lines that are doing this, we're going to assume that they're parallel. Usually, they'd be marked um, with like maybe a little double arrow symbol somewhere, or a single arrow to let you know that they are parallel. But I don't want to sit there and write that 50 times. So just go along with it and think that any lines that look like they're parallel probably are. Even if they sort of may not exactly look like they're parallel, they probably are anyway. I'm going to move the camera up real fast here. Okay. Now, uh, when two parallel lines are intersected by the same line, this line is referred to as a transversal. This line, so this long line here is transversal. And eight individual angles are made. Now, the angle relationships in, in terms of how they relate to each other can be defined based on the idea of whether they are related based on being at the same crossing. So we're going to refer to this point, this intersection, as a crossing for our uh, uh, explanation today. This is a second crossing. If they're on the same crossing, we treat them just like they are uh, lines that would be around anyway. So... If they share a crossing, or as to say they come from the same crossing, if they share a side, so I have this angle here and then this angle here. See how they share this side? If they share a side, they are at minimum adjacent. Uh, in, in better terms, they're really supplementary. Adjacent just means that they share a side, so they're really supplementary which is to say that if you add them up, they equal 180, so sum of 180. So the first determination that we're going to make, that's supposed to say sum, that's the worst sum ever, uh, sum 180 degrees. So if they're on the same crossing, quote unquote, and they share a side, we're going to add up their values and they should equal 180. Now if they share a but, so let me see if I can grab another color here real fast to show you what sharing a butt means because that seems really weird if you haven't heard it before. So I have this angle here. Now, if I take this V that I just made and flip it over on itself by keeping the same butt, so pretend like you're bent in half and this is your upper body and this is your legs going out, your butt would be like right in here, right? So if they have the same butt, so I flip over this angle, so this falls on top of this, and this line falls on top of this, I create this new angle here. See how they have this one part that's the same? So they share a butt, is what we say in class. Uh, and when they do share a butt, those lines are considered to be vertical. Which makes a lot of sense, because they are Vs, right? So you've got this V, and it falls directly on top of this V. And their value, when they're vertical, is that they are congruent. And congruent means they have the same... Uh, measure. So if this is 120 degrees, this one will also be 120 degrees. So the first determination are angles that are at the same crossing. Now, uh, the ones in this original setup, so the angle 1 and angle 6 are vertical angles because they share the same butt, right? So I'll write vertical angles. The vertical angle pairs, which by the way are congruent, are 1 and 6. 2 and 5. And down below, I've got another set, 7 and 4, and 3 and 8. I guess I have two more sets, right? Angle 3 and angle 8, and angle 7 and angle 4. So all of these angle pairs, 4 and 7, 3 and 8, they're congruent. So if, say, 3 is 45, or let's just say it's 30, then 8 would be 30 as well. So that relationship is, lock, is locked in based on how it's measured in terms of where it comes out. And you can sort of get an idea. If I was able to draw a straight line, which I'm really bad at drawing straight lines, even with a ruler, assuming these are parallel, if I did the relationship with the angle that I have here, it's somewhere in the range of about 55 degrees. You can see it right there. Now if I move this up just a little bit and reset it in the same general vicinity, if I match it up perfectly, it's going to give me a, and I'm off the screen now, it's going to give me a 55-degree uh, angle as well. So those angles lock in as being the same. The other type of relationship that we might uh, see, oh, I forgot to do the uh, supplementary angles. So SUPS, and these are the angles that equal 180. That would be 1 and 2, 1 and 5. 
uh, two and six. Two and one, which you've already done. Five and six. And those are just the ones on the top. So I have one and two, two and six, five and six, one and five is another one. Any one where they're next to each other and they share a side. Down below, you've got three and seven. I'm not going to write them all down. Seven and eight, four and eight, and three and four. Anything that shares a side is a, a supplementary angle. And those supplementaries mean that they have a sum of 180 degrees. Now, what happens if we're talking about a relationship that goes from one crossing to the other? So say angle one and angle four. Four. Well, that's not in the same crossing. They share neither a side or a butt. So we're going to look at them a little bit differently. I made a little grid for anything as long as the angles are both inside or outside those parallel lines. Uh, lines like this are defined in terms of their ability to, uh, in terms of whether they're inside or outside the uh, parallel lines and then which side of the transversal that they're on. So uh, in my original, I had one, two, I don't know why I decided to do 3, 4 right here, 5, 6, 7, and 8. Now, if I'm looking at angles that are inside the parallel lines, so that would be 5, 6, 7, and 8. So in my little grid inside the parallel lines, those angles would fall right here. Now, if they are on the same side of the transversal, so it's just to say here's the transversal, so 5 and 7, now those are interior, and they're on the same side of the transversal, so we're going to call them same side, interior angles. They may also be called uh, consecutive interior angles. And once again, I apologize for writing with a pen that's almost impossible to read. Let me flip over and see if it's legible in uh, another pen that I might have close by. So this says same side interior angles. Now, if they're inside and they're opposite sides, so they're inside the parallel line set, so somewhere in this general vicinity, and they're on opposite sides. This would be interior, and they're on opposite. So we call them opposite interior angles. So opposite interior angles. So name them based on the relationships. Incident, uh, and by the way, the opposite interior angles would be uh, 5 and 8 and 6 and 7. The same side interior angles would be 7 and 5, or 5 and 7, and 6 and 8. See, it's hard to read the pen. That's why I've been using the marker, but I may have to find some balance between the two. Maybe one of those really thin-tipped um, Sharpies. I think I have one. I do. We'll see if this works any better. Opposite interior angles. It's a little better, not much. Um, we could also look at the angles that are on the outside. That would be 1, 2, 3, and 4. If they are on the same side, like 2 and 4 happen to be, then they are same side exterior angles. So same side exterior. That would be 1 and 3, and 2 and 4. You may also hear them called consecutive exterior or consecutive interior angles. That's also possible. Uh, if they are on opposite sides, shockingly enough, we refer to them as opposite exterior angles. That's how they're named. There's one other type that you might have to deal with. That's when one is inside and one is outside. And they're in the exact same location in relationship to the crossing. So, uh, for instance, angle 1 and angle 7. So you probably have stereotyped groups in your school. I mean, there's like the sports people, and then there's like the, you know, the mathlete people, those kind of folks. And generally, at every school you go to, they have the same types of people. So let's just pick um, math nerds, because I'll just use myself. Why not, right? Um, in school number one, or in the first crossing, in the top left is where math nerds hang out. So if I want to go to another school and find their corresponding group, I would go down to this school, and in the top left is seven. So I can say that angle one and angle seven are corresponding 
angles. Groups are the same everywhere, right? I guess other groups you might have like uh, the stereotypical people that are referred to as jocks. So uh, four in this group at this high school is the same as six at this high school. Those would be corresponding angles. And incidentally enough, their values are equal. Let's talk about how to find the values of things if they're not on the same crossing. And I'm going to do some sample problems in a second video, but I just wanted to show you how to figure out which, uh, uh, which set are which. So by the way, if I was going to name them same side interior angles, so I'll call them SSIs. And my SSIs would be interior, which means they're inside in this group, so 6, and they're on the same side also, so 6 and 8. And the other group would be uh, 5 and 7. And I'm going to be lazy and not put the angle there, but just assume it's there. Opposite interior angles would be inside and on opposite sides, so 5 and 8. And uh, 6 and 7. If I need same side exterior, or SSE, that would be outside this parallel line. So 1, 2, 3, and 4 are my only, sorry, are my only exterior angles. And if we're on the same side, it'd be 4 and 2. And then 3 and 1. And my uh, opposite exterior, op E, would be 1 and 4 and 2 and 3. And you can see how that's set up. Now my corresponding angles would be 1 and 7 because they're both, see at this crossing it's top left, the corresponding angle down here would be uh, 7, so angle 1 and angle 7, uh, angle 2 and angle 8, angle 6 and angle 4, and angle 3 and angle 5. Because they're in the same basic location, just they're on different crossings, right? Now, let's talk about how to find their values. And then in the second section, I'll come back and actually do some finding their values so you can uh, look at those. But in this section, we're just going to talk about how you can do it. Now, remember, if they're on the same crossing, so in this case, like 1 and 6 are on the same crossing, if they share a side, they're supplementary. So we need to add them up and set them equal to 180. So if I know 5, I can get 6 by doing 180 minus 5, or 5 plus 6 equals 180, that kind of thing. If they share the same bud, or they're vertical, they're opposite about the x's, then I do 2 and 5. Uh, they would be equal to each other because vertical angles are congruent. So that's, happen that's what happens if they're on the same crossing. Now, if they're on different crossings, we're going to use a little method that uh, I jokingly refer to in my class as but Zorro but. But Zorro but is a very simple way to figure out the values of things and whether they're supplementary or congruent. Now, you can remember that corresponding angles are congruent, same side interiors are supplementary, uh, alternate interiors are uh, congruent, opposite in opposite exterior angles, how they're related, and blah, blah, blah. Or you can just use butt, zero, butt, which is very simple. Now, the first thing I need to do in butt, zero, butt is pick an angle at the top and mark it. So I make that mark. Uh, from there, I'm going to mark its angle that has the same butt. So 1 has the same butt as 6. So I'm going to make the butt. Now I'm going to do the Zorro part. Now in this case, the Zorro is backwards because I chose the wrong side. But uh, in the show, or in the movies and things with Zorro, he always would like leave the little Z in the tree after he had defeated his enemies. So you either have to do a Z that's this way, or the backwards Z like this. And you want to use this angle so it's sort of in the elbow right there. So I'm going to do this. Even though it's inaccurate, we occasionally refer to this as the dyslexic Zorro because the letters are flipped, which is just a component sometimes of dyslexia. It's something else. Anyway, so we make this. So I'm going to mark the other angle that's in the elbow right there. So I did butt, I did Zorro, and then I do butt and mark the angle that has the same butt as this one. So the, same, the one that has the same butt as 7 is 4. Now, if an angle is marked, or if they are both marked, They're congruent. So 
So in this case, I can say that angle 1, angle 6, angle 7, and angle 4 are all congruent. If they are both unmarked, I'm going to say they're still congruent. So angle 2, angle 5, angle 8, and angle 3 are all congruent to each other, but obviously not to the ones that are all marked. And if the angles you're looking for, one is marked and the other is not, then you can say that those two angles are related because they are supplementary. So you're going to set them equal to 180 degrees. And in the second video, we're going to come back and talk about um, how uh, I'm going to do a few of the problems with that involved and see if we can use but, zor, but, and then the whole same crossing, different crossing thing to figure out what their values are. I think it's much easier to sort of do it this way. By the way, uh, one or like two and seven, you see how two is marked and seven, or seven is marked and two is not. This would be a situation where two plus seven equals 180. So when I come back, I'll do a couple of these and hopefully this will make more sense.